Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining this, um, this webinar to, on the occasion of the launch of Polodex. Uh, Polodex is a new online application for the discovery and exploration of um, polar research, logistics, and infrastructure in both the Arctic and the Antarctic. Um, it has been developed by the European Polar Board and particularly through its action group on infrastructure, but also with the collaboration of, of many, many partners, which we'll come to later. My name is Joseph Nolan. I'm the policy officer in the Secretariat of the EPB, and I will be giving you a, a brief uh, background to, to Polodex and, um, and a little bit of a tour around the application. Um, so without further ado, I suppose I will, uh, I will begin. So Polodex, um, well, its origins can be traced back in a way to something called the European Polar Infrastructure Catalogue. This was a, a joint initiative by EU Polar Net One project and the, uh, and the EPB. Um, the the catalogue is is a is a printed book. It's also available in PDF form on the EPB website. Um, but it it covers stations, camps, laboratories, shelters, vessels, and aircraft in, in um, operated by European uh, polar research programs in the Arctic and the Antarctic. And in there, you can find all the details of, of the, the location, the, the the environment around these facilities, the 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 capabilities and the equipment available, um, and and such like. So it's really a tool to help with planning for science in the field and uh, at sea. Uh, and Renuka has kindly posted a chat uh, a link to that in the chat box, so uh, you can look at that there. But this catalogue then later developed into the into a database form. So this is the European Polar Infrastructure Database, also available on the EPB website. Um, and that contains much of the same information and, and plus some extra from what was in the catalog, um, but in a in a in a online format that can be explored and, and you can use search filters and, and so on. So I also encourage you to go and look at that on our website. Then last year, during um, early 2021, the EPB began um, hosting the Due South database, which was developed by SUS, the Southern Ocean Observing System. Due South is the database of upcoming expeditions to the Southern Ocean. And effectively, it is uh, an online system for for seeing the future and also past cruises in the Southern Ocean, um, operated by by SUS members and other other organisations as well, and there you can see the where the where ships are planning to go in the Southern Ocean, um, some information about the work they will be doing, and it can be seen as a, a way for scientists to um, look for an opportunity for collaboration or or to um to to explore opportunities for, for collecting samples with with other people and, and so on um the, the due south system also includes projects as well um so that is also available on the epb website um and via SUS as well of course but then following on from that we then combined all of these things into a new platform um which is known as Polodex, which we are launching today. Um, this combines the, the functions and, and also the, the information included in, in all of the previous, um, previous things that I've just mentioned, plus a whole host of new facilities uh, and functions and, and lots more data included. So Polodex again covers both the Arctic and the Antarctic. It has uh, field facilities, uh, which include stations, laboratories, uh, weather stations, um, etc. 
but also vessels and aircraft, and then the planned route section, which uh, gives details of cruises, flights, traverses, etc. at both poles. So again, it, it combines the, the facilities of, um, of, the, of the previous things into a new system, um, which we are launching today, and we will show you some further detail. To give an example, um, here you can see uh, the entry for a particular research station in the Arctic um, with data provided by the Interact um, network of, of Arctic research stations. So you can see there's all sorts of information there about the location, the, the, the environment around it. You can also find information about what, what uh, science facilities are at the station and, and other things that might be useful for planning your field work. The ex example of, of the vessels, um, here is a, the example of the Esperides, the Spanish research vessel. And again, you can see the, it gives information about the, the equipment and the facilities on board, but also the, the capabilities um, in, in different, uh, different ice conditions and things like that. And there is equivalent information also for aircraft. The plans route section um, of Polodex is, is a, in a way the, the new home to, uh, to due south, SUS is due south, and it gives um, details of, of cruises in the Southern Ocean at the moment. Um, but the facility is there for in the future, we will be adding cruises and, and other, other expeditions or campaigns in the Arctic as well. And, and also um, terrestrial campaigns, flights, traverses, et cetera, not only, um, not only cruises, on, on, uh, not only oceanographic research. And here is an example of the visualization you get within Polodex of, of some of the, the information uh, for the planned routes, in this case, around the Antarctic Peninsula. So that gives you a little bit of a flavor of Polodex. Um, and on to the last slide, I just wanted to give credit to the various organizations that have been involved in its development. So as I said, this has been led by the EPB Action Group on infrastructure, but it has been a truly collaborative effort uh, with many partners providing valuable input and providing data or information to populate uh, Pol Polodex. It's important to note that Polodex is not, not the holder of any of the information within it, and um, we are simply providing a link to, to data uh, or metadata that is, that is elsewhere. Um, we're just trying to bring bring this together. So we're very grateful for the contributions of partners who have um, who have enabled their information to be displayed in Polodex in different forms. And Polodex is not intended to be the the ultimate platform that the be all and end all. And there are other other such portals and platforms available that that do more specialist things. But Polodex is kind of unique in its way of bringing together the different types of infrastructure information and also the, the logistical information into one place. And we already have plans in the future for, for further development. Today is, is quite a, a milestone. But it's, it's really can be seen as kind of the start for, for Polodex. We already have plans for future developments, new sections, um, we're, we're in conversations with, with partners to increase the, uh, the metadata displayed in Polodex um, and, and new, new functions, and functions and features will be coming soon. But most of all, I would just like to give a thank you to these organizations on the screen. So key collaborators have been ASUS, um, particularly Pip Pritcher, who's until recently was the data data officer at, at Polodex and has worked uh, a great deal towards Polodex. Um, partners from, from EU Polonet, um, also from SIOS, the Svalbard um, Integrated Earth Observing System. Um, Inga Jennings, again, who was formerly of SIOS, also contributed a lot of work towards, towards Polodex. 
Interact, who have provided lots of input, including data on all of the stations and their network. Uh, Comnap, the Council of Managers of National Antarctic Programs, who have kindly made, made their information available, as have Eurofleets, which um, have provided a lot of the, the information relating to vessels. The British Antarctic Survey and the Alfred Wegener Institute, um, uh, as well as UFAR, who um, together have provided information relating to aircraft. We've also had input from ARICE, the Arctic Research Icebreaker Consortium, and ESAFIC, who have provided um, very comprehensive information relating to facilities and infrastructure in Greenland. And also IATO, the, the uh, International Association of Antarctic Tour Operators, who have made information about the cruises of their, uh, their members be available um, to be displayed in Polodex via Two South. Also, I'd just like to mention Blue Lobster, the, uh, who have been the, the real developers behind Polodex and, and doing all the nuts and bolts and the actual build of the platform. So we're very grateful to them as well. Um, and yes, I will stop there for now with the presentation. Um, and what we will now do is go towards, I will do a little tour of Polodex itself um, and show you some of the features. If anybody has any questions, you can um, use the Q&A box or you can even raise your hand um, and we can, we can ask you questions um, and we can try to answer them as well. But I will do a little quick tour around um, if I can share the screen. And <clears throat> if Renuka or somebody could post the link to Polodex into the chat box and then people can, can, um, can have a look for themselves. Yep, so hopefully... I've posted the link already, so it should be available. Okay, thank you, Renuka. Um, so when you come to polodex.org, this is this is what you're uh, you're confronted with. This is this is Polodex. Um, in this case, we initially are seeing the uh, Antarctic view, but if you switch here, the button in the top right, you can switch between between the poles. Um, so this is what we call the pole flipper. Um, and on the map, we're currently here and you'll see the field facilities. So each of these pins represents a different station or camp or, or different facility in the field. We can zoom in uh, and if we click on one, then for example, we have rather a research station. And when you click to more details, there is all the information about the facility uh, is available there. Um, and the same thing is available in the Arctic. Um, so, for example, we can click on a station here in the north of Sweden. We've got Tafala Research Station. And as you can see the logo here, this information is provided by Interact. Um, and again, information is available there. So you can explore. You can look to the climatic information, the infrastructure that's available there. Um, and then there's some information about, about access, how to, um, how to access the facility. In the vessels section, we have the list of, uh, of all the different, well, of many different polar research vessels and research supporting vessels. Um, largely this information is provided by Eurofleets, but also by Comnap. Um, so for example, if we click onto the Esperides, you can see an image there of the ship and um, different, different uh, data about the, uh, about the, the vessel and, and some of its capabilities for research. In a similar way, we have um, the list of, of aircraft um, 
So let's look at this one, the um, this uh, German Polar Research Aircraft. And again, you have all this information about its facilities and, and its range, and etc. Then if we go to the planned route section, we have a list of completed or future cruises. Um, um, and if we go, there we go, um, to the map view, you can see different cruises and different routes that are included in Polodex via due south. And if we click on one, for example, it gives you some details. So this, um, this particular uh, cruise is, is information provided by Aato, so it's a, a tourist vessel. And if we click on the, the detail, there is some, some of the information about what is, what is going on, what's planned, and where, where they're planning to go. Um, some of the other features we can, uh, we can show is we can switch to different base layers for the maps, so you can do different different things. You can show uh, different different data. We also have the SUS regions that can be shown. Um, it takes a moment to load. Uh, there we go. So here you can see the different SUS regions um, around the Southern Ocean. If we go to the to the north, um, let's turn these off. It's a little clearer. Then we also have this ESOFIC uh, utility layer. So ESOFIC includes a lot of information about um, infrastructure in Greenland that's not necessarily science infrastructure, but is nonetheless could be useful information for for for, for researchers planning field work. So you can add to these different um, different layers and different information to give some details of different facilities around Greenland. Um, within the uh, if if you make an account on on Polodex, you can sign up and um, register. Once you have done that, there is an, a facility I have not actually. Uh, subscribe to any yet myself but there is a opportunity to to subscribe to updates from, from different planned routes so if there's a particular cruise that you might be interested in you can subscribe to that and you will receive updates whenever there are any changes made um, to your email address there's also options to submit routes um, so there is this form here um, where you can submit if you are planning a cruise that's not included, it can be added manually here, and then that will go through a um, a, a process to be checked and, and and vetted by the administrators before it gets published. Uh, there is also perhaps this is one of the most <laughs> useful things this audience here today. We have a contact form, so if you have any questions or feedback, or if you find any bugs or errors in the data and things like that, please use this form and um, we, will, we will then be able to easily gather all of that input. As I said, this is really the start of Polodex, so we're expecting there to be errors here and there and things that need to be ironed out. Um, a lot of this will become hopefully a bit better um, in future. Um, particularly with some work that's ongoing and hopefully in the planning relating to better standardization of, um, of information relating to, to polar infrastructures and logistics, and better interoperability. So in the future, we're hoping that um, a lot of the information in Polodex will become more seamlessly automated and updates will become more regular uh, and and more consistent, basically. 
So I've just put this back up to show you some of the logos of the, the partners involved. Um, um, so again, thank you to all of all of them. And please spend some time having a look around around Folodex. And if you have any questions, please let us know. We are at the end of the first stage, I would say, and it's been quite a, quite an effort. So today is quite a big day, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope you like it. I hope it is useful. I will just bring it up to the panel. Actually, uh, we've got Mickey Ojeda, who is the chair of the action group, which has led the development of Polodex. So maybe Mickey will be able to. Uh, answer any questions that anybody might have. Again, the, the Q&A box is open or also please raise your hand if you would like to, uh, to say something. Mickey, hello. Would you like to say a few words? Hello, Joseph, and uh, hello to all. And, and thank you, uh, first of all, uh, to all the partners, uh, people involved, not only in EPV, but as um, Joseph said uh, before, this is a really and truly uh, coll collaborative effort and, and work. And, and we are really excited to present today to uh, everyone. Uh, as uh, Joseph also said, this is something coming from the uh, EPB uh, Infrastructure uh, Action Group. Um, and we are seeing today uh, the the reality of the of the system, and um, I, I I believe that this is uh, something to to uh, result. This is not a, a fix and uh, a, a fixed system. That this is a, a dynamic uh, tool that we are um, aiming and and uh, happy to to add uh, whatever. Uh, new set of data that could be uh, useful for the polar uh, science community. So uh, we are really grateful and thankful for all the people that have been uh, working in, in that comes through uh, among these uh, last, uh, I should say, almost years. So um, Thank you again to all, and, and, and we are happy to, to answer uh, your questions or your doubts about that. Thank you very much, Mickey. And yes, as, as I mentioned, the, we, we have plenty of plans for the future and further developments. So we are also very open to any suggestions that people might have or um, ideas, that things that we could include in future. Um, so yeah, I don't see any questions at the moment or any raised hands. I don't know if anybody in the audience would also like to say something. I can see there are a few few members of the action group and the develop, developing team in the audience. So if, if you want to uh, say anything, please just raise your hand. We can do that. But if not... Oh, go on, thank you, please. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also important to uh, remember that uh, we are not um, hosting the, the data. We are uh, trying to gather uh, most of the information as we can uh, to uh, build polar decks and, and, and see polar decks and as, as a uh, main, but not unique uh, point of entrance to the information about the infrastructure in the in the polar areas. So uh, APB is is really grateful and proud to um, to develop the the system and, and increase the their cap capabilities in, in the near future. As Joseph said, we have uh, plenty of plans to uh, make uh, polar decks uh, useful and helpful for the community. Yeah, and we, we hope that um, by providing the platform, the organizations holding the data and, and uh, gathering information about their, their logistics and their infrastructure, we'll see that the Polodex can 
can add extra value to that and and hopefully it was seen as a a valuable thing for the community as a whole um and a tool for everybody it's while it's had its origins as a european um activity it's very much an international effort um for the, for the whole global polar community so hopefully we can people will use it and see some added value um and from from the different features involved good well i don't see any hands or any any questions um so i think kronuka just wants to say something but i would just like to say thank you everybody to attending i felt a little bit like um a lot of work has got into this and then i don't know uh, you know it's now out there and i feel a little bit lost and uh don't know quite what to do exactly next but um i suppose that's often the way with these things Renuka, please thanks uh yeah i mean it it's not anticlimactic it's one step in the process so we now we've released our thing to everyone now it's up to everyone to play with it and point back to us if anything is wrong or if anything uh, could be improved. Uh, so we're happy to take your suggestions. Yep, I just wanted to add my thanks to everyone. Um, Joseph's, led the, uh, Joseph's led the project from within the EPB Secretariat with Mickey and the Action Group on Infrastructure. Um, so thanks to all of you. And it's good to see a, pro a product come to fruition. It's, it's kind of nice to see that. Uh, released on the EPB website. So yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd suggest all of you go and visit it, play with it, try to break it <laughs> so we can improve it for everyone. So thank you very much and have a lovely day. Thank you, everybody. Um, short but sweet webinar. So I hope, um, I hope you found it useful and uh, yeah, please, please, uh, Please go and play with Polidex. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.